All right. Go we're live. live. I don't know if I we're, live. we're yes, live. Yes, it says we're live. Are we live? Okay. Well, let's, sure. Oh, we're live. Okay. We're live. Great. We're yeah. live. If we're not live, we're live. We're, li- we're live. I, I feel alive today. I don't know about you yeah. guys. Yes. I feel alive too. Um, Did a six, short six miles yesterday. Oh, short six miles. Damn. That's all, Slacker. I yep. am so jealous. Got um, nine on the books for Sunday. Nine on the books for Sunday. I, yeah. I can't do it. It's too hot here. Whatever. <laughs> it, it, for those not knowing we were talking about running and um uh and even if you don't run whatever it's all about it's all about making a schedule keeping yourself accountable and sticking to it um jason just went dark on my screen which means oh, i think he doesn't, yep, doesn't yep, want to yep, go yep, 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 there I am. <laughs> am i back yeah there yeah goes. you're back okay <laughs> He's going to learn how to use this thing one of these. Yeah. All right. And Let's dive in. We're back. All right. Uh, so thank you, all of you guys who are out there or watch us later on or anyone who wants to listen to us. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button for us. Uh, that little bit of feedback makes my day so much better. Like you wouldn't believe. I could go running for nine miles and have the best PR on the planet. But when you hit that subscribe button, it feels so much better than d- d- that accomplishment. Mm-hmm. All right, that's not true. But it will make me feel <laughs> almost as good as that. So I would really appreciate it if, if, you, if you show your support. And we are loving this format so far. It's been fun. I've been enjoying it and learning and growing and whatever anyway so i am here for my second time this week with andrew funderberg and my co-host jen lewis say hello and guys that should happy be friday enough of me for a very long time for everybody <laughs> <laughs> no kidding it's, well i can never get enough of you and, and for those of you who don't know andrew and jen and i have been friends for a very long time and andrew yeah. uh, has... jason and i longer because jen's a baby correct yeah. <laughs> Correct. Well, you guys are just really super old. So. I think we've been friends for 20 years when Jen was born, probably. 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 Yeah. Right. probably. We were <laughs> friends before being friends was a thing. Exactly. Uh, right. <laughs> so uh, Andrew's joining us from Portland, Oregon. Jen is somewhere in the California, in the Carolina mountains, someplace. I don't know. Somewhere in the on the East Coast. Or something. I don't even know. Right. <laughs> nowhere near the mountains. <laughs> it's North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm-hmm. There are mountains there, if, if I if I remember. There are correctly. mountains there, yes. but okay. not near me. <laughs> not near you, and yeah. uh, so we've covered East, Central, and West Coast today, right? So for That's those right. of you who are here, let us know where where you live, and we'd love to hear any questions that you have during this, and please say hello. Anyway. All right. So, Andrew. Yes. <laughs> what are we talking about today? So we're talking about the future of photography. We are talking about the future of photography. It's just, just, yeah. uh, just a small topic. Just a small topic. Just a small um, topic. And to bring it down, let's talk about the future of professional photography as it relates to the greater scope of photography in general. Because uh, we're the uh the quality of photography that the non-professional is able to take now is i would say jason you can concur probably better than professional photography when dslrs were first coming out you know the quality of photography that even my kids who are 18 and 20 are producing with this thing right here is better than a lot of the professional photography we saw in the early 2000s when Jen was born. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Early 2000s. No, You're there's, welcome, and Jen. <laughs> this is, this has definitely been a topic that we have all discussed over the years. And it seems to me it now being almost three decades into photography, which is frightening, but it's gone from, you know, film to digital to now having all these devices that are with us all the time that take incredible pictures. 
you know, back in the day, you know, just, just going and shooting film was difficult and you needed some form of, you know, technical abilities. Then all of a sudden you're shooting a wedding and there were these little boxes that allowed us to shoot pictures. And remember those box cameras that people used, those disposable cameras yeah. that people used to mm -hmm. shoot. And then yeah. I remember, I remember photographers like crying, like, Oh my God, I cannot believe these people are taking pictures at the wedding. This is so disruptive. These disposable cameras mm -hmm. are going to take over and, yeah. and, and it's going to kill everything. And then all of a sudden we got digital cameras and then digital the cameras. Same conversation, right? It was exactly the same conversation. And here we are in 2020 mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, my God, iPhone photography and, and, and uh, you know, whatever the other things are called uh, yeah. have these cameras in them and they're going to destroy us as photographers. And guess what? Yeah. It's not happening. Yeah. Well, so I think for some photographers, it's true. Yes. And then for some photographers, it's not. And I think that's the key of the, the future of professional photography is the difference between those two photographers. Correct. What is the difference, Andrew? Um, so th in all honesty, the difference between the photographer that it will destroy and the photographer that it won't is um, the photographer who is viewing themselves as a full service business and are providing a service that goes beyond a pretty or cool photo of the client. All right. And then, you know, we've... Jason and I can concur. Um, you've Jen, you've been in the business for like two and a half years now, so you you probably have seen this a couple of times. Um, is that we've Jason and I have, have seen this over and over as the the hot photographer, right? The photographer that's really famous and really cool for three or four years because you know maybe they're winning awards or maybe they're you know famous on some social media platform and then they just disappear. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because if your photography is based in, based on being the popular, cool photographer, there are 8,000 people nipping at your heels. Right. And mm -hmm. yeah. um, those 8,000 people are hungrier than you are. Like you were hungry, hungry trying to get that position. But once you do, you're not hungry anymore. You're like, oh, that was tiring. <laughs> I'm right. out. So it's the photographers that are working on giving their clients a something full service and the, you know, the thing that I've been preaching on forever, but it's really true as far as a, um, a, a long lasting professional is the power of print and the power of the printed photograph and the power of printed products, right? That's, that's the key. Well, yeah, and, and you have been driving, and, and I think there's there's one thing or one movement in the photography world that doesn't change, which is obviously servicing your clients, right, mm -hmm. in one way, shape, or form. But then within that, there typically is something that drives, you know, a, a, another movement within that. So like right now, it's the power of print, right? Before that, it was, and we'll get to that in a second, and I definitely want to unpack that quite a bit. But before that, there was, you know, sure, you can take digital pictures with your digital camera, but it was the ability to, you know, put them in an album or the ability to provide, you know, you know, when digital was first coming around, like, you know, delivering decent quality <laughs> digital images was a difficult task like <laughs> so that you didn't look like a martian yeah. and it still required some some effort and then you know the digital cameras you know also you know the quality of those images wasn't there so you know back then remember remember when we were all trying to figure out what the hell white balance was <laughs> Like no, like there were there were month long discussions on what white balance actually was. Like we nobody knew what the hell it was. Well, my favorite was that it was wow, they look so good on my screen. I adjust all these skin tones, and then it gets printed, and it looks like you know they just landed on Mars. Yeah, or or trying to find that balance. So it required a lot of trial and error, and and those things. But it was that it was that pursuit that you know made us the professionals, right? And now we're at a time where, you know, I mean, I am with my iPhone 11 now, I am absolutely amazed at the, the quality of the images that I can get from that. 
and printing them, you know, is the, is the only thing that's, that's different. I know that, you know, we win said a few months ago, um, something to the effect of, on a Facebook post that said all of our, all of our family's memories are on Facebook. Like, yeah. you know, there's nothing, there's nothing hanging on our walls. Like mm-hmm. everything that we have is contained within our, within our phone and, mm-hmm. and how he hasn't watched my documentary. Has he? No, <laughs> he obviously hasn't watched your documentary. And I think that's, that's a good point. Like, you know, and getting back to, you know, the power of print and, you know, somewhere along the lines, we lost, you know, the, the, the need for us to be hanging pictures on our walls and putting things in books. And it's, it's now that movement, again, servicing our clients, it's that movement in, of the power of print that is, that is, that is bringing it back. And it's, it's up to us now to train, you know, our future clients in, in the importance of that. Well, and also, I think um, this goes a little deeper into the state we're in in the society is, is we as photographers can help people move past the fact that their value isn't in how many likes and comments they get on a photo that they put on Facebook. Their, their value is in their meaning to their family members, the people that love them and their legacy within their family. And all of these likes and comments and like that's nobody really gives a crap, right? Except, you know, your mom that's <laughs> that's commenting on Facebook. <laughs> my right? mom is also she's my top fan. Yeah, she's she's <laughs> my mom's my top she fan is. too. Yeah. She doesn't <laughs> care about you, Jason. <laughs> I disagree. Um, but uh, we as a photographer, we also one of our jobs is to let our clients know that it is okay for them to invest in themselves and to show their own family how much uh, they love their own family by investing in a fine art album or investing in some wall art versus, you know, investing in a new cable subscription. I mean, I do like my HD TV package. <laughs> is that not important? <laughs> It is not, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jen. Yeah. I know that you spend a lot of time, and I need to bring it back on screen here. Uh, I know that you spend a lot of time working with your clients in making sure that you you deliver those printed products. Talk to us yeah, about that. Absolutely. I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. Um, so I am primarily high school seniors. And despite what Andrew mentioned earlier, about two and a half years, I've been doing this for 13. Um, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> you must have started um, when you were 13 then. Yes, actually I did. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, one of the things that I mention all the time is, you know, like you guys were mentioning social media and the likes, that's a very temporary you get a temporary high when you're, you know, you feel like people like you and that kind of thing when you get likes and comments on your images, but then they get buried in news feeds, you know, Instagram and Snapchat and the things that kids are doing today is gone in 24 hours. And Facebook, if it makes it to mom's Facebook page, it gets buried and she might see it once a year when Facebook memories pop up, but that's it, you know, and I always, um, you know, I always just, I want them to know that the only way, because nothing is getting printed anymore. So the only way that their, you know, great granddaughter is going to know what they looked like, you know, what her great grandmother looked like when she was 17 is to have an album, you know, or, or prints to look at. Like, that's the way, because, you know, I want to know, like when I was younger, I wanted to know who I looked like in the family. You know, did I resemble my grandmother? Like I've seen some really, really cool um, images of people here on Facebook and that sort of thing sometimes where it shows like them as, you know, at the same age as their grandmother was and they look almost identical. And that's so cool to see. But in this digital age, they're not ever going to experience that. They're never going to be able to pass that down. And I think it's really important um, that, you know, that our uh, legacy is passed down, you know, to, and they don't think about this stuff, you know, mm-hmm. not to mention, this is usually the last time that they have professional photos done before they get married. So for my high school seniors, it's really important to me to, um, give them some images to show when they're like on the cusp of adulthood. 
And, you know, it's just a really important time for them to capture and then have images to keep. So their albums, their wall art, and not to mention the wall art on the walls for the parents. Once the kid's gone to school, you know, they, they want to have that wall art on the walls to pass by in the living room every day and see their daughter's smiling face or, you know, that kind of thing or see her doing what she loved to do um, because they miss them when they're off to college. So it's, you know, I think that's really important stuff. So that's, those are the types of things that I talk to my clients about. And, you know, I tell them these things because I want them to know that I have their best interest in mind. I'm, I'm doing this so they have something um, tangible instead of just some digital images that are never going to be looked at again. Yeah, I'm done. That's, <laughs> I'll, 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 sorry. I get really excited about this stuff. I love this topic. So I can yeah. talk all day, but I'm, I'm going to try not to. This is like the three hour YouTube show today, right, Jay? Like we do the three hour one once a month. This is the three hour one, right? Yes. Yes. And yes. I'm gonna, okay, good I'm answer. gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, the last, the last two hours will be YouTube. I'm gonna pull out my mortgage assistant application and start <laughs> reading the terms, the terms of, uh, which by the way, not a fan of my mortgage company. But anyway, all right, moving on. So you are a new photographer, Andrew, and you are not a Gen Xer. Mm -hmm. and you grew up in a digital age and you're starting a new business and, you know, talk to me about, you know, you, you haven't spent a lot of time with printed products. Mm -hmm. What is your advice to that photographer in, in, you know, getting started? So, you know, I think, um, one thing, uh, that to kind of, change the conversation a little bit is mm. that um, young, like young people are valuing printed products already. Like um, the Fuji makes most of its money off of Instax film. And most of that film is purchased by people between the ages of 15 and 25. Huh? So um, they already know. Okay. Okay. So the, the next thing I think is, you know, go back, look at, do you have, prints of yourself of, as a kid. A lot of people don't, right? Um, and go back right. and look at your parents' prints and be like, hey, mom, where's my print? <laughs> um, but then, you know, I think that moving beyond this, we want to talk about uh, thing, things as a business. Okay. Um, there's a really great book called uh, The Revenge of Analog, and it talks about... Uh, analog businesses from multiple perspectives. So mm. things like moleskin notebooks have had their best year of business year on year again and again for like five years in a row, the last five years, right? So people mm. are valuing paper. Um, if you want to get a record printed, the wait list is like 12 months now. Wow. Because they're so popular. Um, if you're not a news magazine, like if you're a specialty magazine, like um, Magnolia Journal or Yoga or Outside Magazine or something like a specialty magazine, mm -hmm. revenues are way up hmm. compared to before. Um, what are some of the other examples with, um, so there's all these, so people are craving analog products okay, because they value them and they're also most of these are also premium products like i just bought outside magazine it was seven dollars for a magazine remember magazines were like a dollar <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um so now let's talk about why that is okay so um my first year of college i was an economics major and then i worked in an economics office for a month and then i quickly changed my major to literature because I figured that I didn't want to do that. But the fundamental of, of economics is supply and demand, right? So uh, we all going through this pandemic, right? There was a short supply of toilet paper. And so the price of toilet paper went up. Super easy to understand, right? If something is a shortage, you know, the price goes up. If, uh, if there's too much of something oversupply, but not many people want it, low demand, then the price goes down. So what, uh, what has happened to the digital photograph? We talked about um, the quality that you can create with an iPhone uh, 11. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of harking back to that, I saw you grab some of my street photography for the little, yeah. uh, 
Yeah. So one of those of the two black and white photos, one of those was taken with a DSLR and one of them was taken with the iPhone 11. Wow. So and you probably can't tell which one. I guess I would have to look, but no, I probably couldn't yeah, tell which one. Probably couldn't. And I yeah. took it in portrait mode, so you probably can't. I took it in like portrait wide mode, so it looks like it was taken at like F two with a thirty five, but it wasn't. Right. Which by um, the way, the wide angle on that camera is amazing. Yeah. So but getting back to that, so we talk about the quality of photos mm -hmm. and the amount of photos. So as the number of photos increases to basically infinity, like I can pull up my Google photos and I can see my kids photos from 2003. As the quantity of digital photos increases, what happens to the price of photography? It goes down. Yeah, it goes right. down. And when the quality of photos that we have access to reaches infinity, the price goes to zero. Right. So right. the price of a digital, the value of a digital photo for a whole lot of people is zero. Hmm. Right. Just because of supply and demand. Right. And it's not going to get any better. No. Right. So, you know, most people my age can't do a really great photo with the iPhone 11 because they don't understand lighting and ever, etc. Mm -hmm. But the quantity of people of 20 year olds, the percentage of 20 year olds that can just produce a really good photo with an iPhone 11 Pro mm -hmm. is really, really high. Yeah. Like super high. Yeah. Right. So um, it's so the uh, shoot and sharing the digital photos, the price points are just going to come down. Right. Right. So uh, how do we counteract that? Well, we provide something that is a high end product mm -hmm. so that we're not selling photography. We're selling these high end products. Right. Right. And so people come to us for the product that we can produce, not from the photography. The photography is a vehicle to that product. Right. Yes. And, and you know, and a certain aspect of that hasn't changed over the years, but yeah. the importance of that has really shifted in that mm -hmm. before when people hired a photographer, and I think to a certain aspect, people still hire photographers for their technical abilities, yeah. but now it has shifted to from you know, the past photography has been about the technical abilities and, oh, by the way, producing a good photograph and, oh, you have some products that are, are nice that we're going to sell you as well, to now a complete shift in that the product is the most important thing. Your technical abilities are secondary to that, even though they're obviously still important. Yeah. And, you know, 10, 10 20 years ago, the access to be able to learn those technical abilities, that barrier to entry was very high. Right. Now it's extremely low. Like if right. somebody puts in the work right. using YouTube within six months, if you put in the work and you have the talent and you're working your butt off, you are going to be able to produce um, top 10% photography. Right. Whether There's or not no you can make any money doing it is a different story, which as, as you exactly. know, listen, yeah. I, I, I've had friends that were most talented photographers in the world could make a living that that's yeah. nothing new as, as an artist. But yeah. one thing that you've preached and you continue to preach is the, if you, if you put these good products in front of them and they buy it, you will put more money in your pocket and the yeah, way that you so, sell it to them. Yeah. And, um, you know, just take for, I, I can't count the number of, um, ambassador slash client slash friends that I have that are wedding photographers that, add at least 50% on top of their wedding bookings and printed product at least. Right. So if they're booking a $5,000 wedding, they're making $2,500 on album or wall art sales. Right. And, um, and, and, and I do think, so that's where I think you hit it on the nail as far as what is the future of professional photography in, in the client service space. I'm not talking about commercial photography yeah. or anything like that, but in, in, the, in, the, in, a, in a, if you're shooting people, and mm -hmm. you're shooting for specific clients, that is the future of photography. The future of photography is not necessarily, you know, making a $10,000 fee to show up because you're 
Andrew Funderburg. It's yeah. I'm showing up, I'm charging you a fee for it, and the most you can get for it, great, good for you. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's what you can present to them to sell them that's going to go in their home in the way that that procedure of how you do it, that's the future of photography. Yeah. yeah. As a salesperson. And, and the the quality of product that professional labs are producing now is so far beyond what the average person is used to from like a Costco or anything. And which is also producing great stuff too. It is. But, but you know, you take like Canon's HD printing, which is basically like a high speed fine art inkjet printer. And they're able to put books together with this and the, the cover choices. And then the, you know, the different canvases with frames and, and acrylic prints, uh, and all of, all of these things that are look so amazing and it's so easy to set yourself apart with these products and it, which basically just raises your price. Right. 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 Comparatively um, is, is truly amazing. And then, and, and it allows people to invest in themselves. And we know that everybody likes to show off on social media, right? But people also love to show off in their home, mm. right? So if you create mm. a really badass art piece and be like, hey, when your friends come over and they see this, what are they going to think? They're like, well, they're going to think that's pretty damn cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a, and that's a great point. And, 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 and I think to, to kind of, you know, change the subject a little bit, you know, in that imagine having – so we're all at home now and, and, you know, we have been for many, many months – I know personally, many photographers have, you know, gone back to their clients and and sold them products to put in their home. And, and, and I've been hearing over and over again, I went back to this client and I sold them, you know, X amount of dollars in Mm -hmm. in prints that they're putting in their product. So I I think we're going to see another shift in, in, in that, that, Mm -hmm. you know, people want to show off in their homes. Now people are going to be opening up their homes, right? Yeah. And right. So think about that. So I was thinking about that the other day, like, you know, as I'm kind of starting to market myself for family pictures and people are, are, are getting out there again, I was thinking to myself, people are going to be having their friends to their house now. So yeah. how much more important it is, you know, you know, to give them that ability to show off to their clients. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It is more is, is now more than ever. And they don't have and that that's the other part of this is that they don't have the ability to know where to hang their pictures. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, not as a plug for your software, but your software gives them the ability to show them pictures of their house where they can show that where their printed products go. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to, you know, fund see, see funny software stuff and, and his Facebook page, and you can see lots of stuff on that. But now that we're moving away from this pandemic, hopefully, and not going into a second wave. But, you know, what advice can you offer from a business standpoint to photographers right now coming out of this? So the, you know, first of all, if you don't know what you're doing, but want to, you know, invest in some education, you know, people like Jen who teach people how to move from digital business to a print-based product, like invest in that education. No matter how much you, in, <clears throat> no matter how much you invest in <clears throat> that almond night, it's coming back <laughs> in, uh, in education or software to do this. Like you're going to make that back in your first client, right? Right. So uh, it's very easy to average fifteen hundred dollars a portrait session very easy. So, you know, let's say you buy my software for three, 400 bucks and you give Jen 1200 bucks to learn how to do this. You're going to make that back like right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, you know, if, if I said, you know, if you give me a thousand dollars and I'm going to give you $50,000 back, how many times would you want to do that? Every time. Yeah. All (laughs) All the the time. time, Every day. Yes. Right. Yes. So it's, it's a very easy thing to do. So invest in education, you know, invest the time to set up your systems and 
um, commit to that. And, you know, that first hurdle is hard, like transitioning your business from digital to print is hard. But once you do, it's easy. And then the great thing that people always forget is that when you offer printed photography, your referrals from really old clients are just as good as your referrals from new clients. Like with social media, basically you're like posting stuff you're shooting now and those clients are referring somebody. But if that referral doesn't happen within three months, then you're dead. Right. Yeah. Right. But True. you've got you've got people coming over to your house and they're like, oh damn, that looks really good. Or wow, this is the album. Who did that? Oh, that's so and so photography. You know, it might be your family album from five years ago. Right. So printed, so the value of that printed photography is not only what it gets you now in terms of revenue, but your referral legacy is so much longer. Right. That's actually a great point, Andrew. I'd actually never thought about that, but that's so true. I have clients from years ago who <laughs> refer me, and I never thought about the difference of why they do that mm -hmm. um, even years later. But yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's been yeah. several years since I've had a shoot and burn model. It's been a long time, but you're yeah. exactly right. Those referrals were always immediate or they didn't happen. But yeah, you're right. Now I, I get them from, from years later. And I mean, I think what you were talking about with the... Um, you know, the transition being the hardest going from digital to products. That's true. But I think the biggest thing that holds people back is the fear of it. It's, yeah. you know, they're, they're scared. They're like, what if I do this and nobody wants to book and then I lose all my clients. And, yeah. you know, I usually tell them you're not making any money doing it this way anyway. So you're not going to lose much <laughs> and, and by transitioning. 2020 is a dumpster fire anyway. So you might as well just do it now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, it's the yeah, best year in the world to do it. <laughs> and so you make I mean, a good point. Go and, wrong, and, that's, right? and that's exactly where we're going to wrap this up today. So 2020 is a dumpster fire. And, and humor is the only way that we can deal with this craziness. Uh, I mean, obviously, we need to be serious. And yeah. uh from where I sit, I have had to take a very hard look at the things that I'm doing and, you know, rebuilding from places that I never thought I would need to be. And, you know, I'd love to hear your advice, but I do want to make a plug for, you know, the group mentors and everything that you've talked about is that if you need somebody to really get some intensive education, the group.com has all of those things and you know mm -hmm. it provides a place for you to have very very intensive education and, and and i don't think a lot of people in our industry spend a lot of time doing that but i guarantee a 1 hour call with jen or you know some of the other photographers that are on the site will make a world of a difference for you and you know again i built it because you know, when I was first starting out, I didn't have that knowledge. I didn't have that, you know, access to all of the pe the seventy five mentors that are currently on there. They're all friends of mine now, um, and I can and I can call them. But I didn't have that that referral base, and I still can't call them now. Like at a certain point, your friends will be like, "When do I turn on the meter for this phone yeah. call?" Right? <laughs> you know, how do when do I start charging for that? So like, you know, having the ability to you know schedule a time to get that intensive education, you know, but you know. I know, Andrew, we added you a couple of months ago and yours is a little bit more serious in that it, you're, you're offering yourself. So you're, you, you have been in this industry for a very long time. You've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of photographers in their business. And, you know, we're at a place now where, you know, some of us who have had businesses, you know, really you're going to need to look at things and, you know, you're offering your services from, you know, a, a standpoint of I run a successful business who has had leaps, you know, up and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. And here we are again. If you need someone to talk to, you're you're offering your services in that to be able to have those hard conversations. So yeah, I want I you mean, to talk about that a little bit. So uh, so it's it's easy during a good economy to have a mediocre to good business and do well but right. in a bad economy the mediocre to good business is not going to do well you're not going to make it no so how to 
um, change your business to make sense uh, in a subpar economy and get out to the other side. Uh, because the thing that is really cool is that if you have a solid business model, you know, and you work your butt off during the downtime, when the economy goes up, it slingshots you. Right. And you want to be part of that slingshot. You want to set yourself up when the economy turns and starts going up, you know, the economy, let's say the economy grows by 10% or whatever, your business is going to grow by like 50 to 70%. It's just slingshots you way up um, because of what you've done during the, the bad times. Yes. And, and, and I have done a lot of thinking about that in going back to some of the crises that I had to deal with in New York City from 9-11 to the mortgage crisis. It was, it was, I can tell you for the mortgage crisis, I was able to survive that because I had built a business that, you know, I had enough clients to slingshot me when the, there was a downturn, right? Mm -hmm. And enough referral yeah. base. But when it came to 9-11, I didn't. I had a much smaller client base. And mm -hmm. as a result of it, you know, it was really hard for me to come out of that because yeah. instead of shooting 50 weddings a year, I was only shooting 25 and yeah. staying out of that. And I was not, I was not prepared for it. I mean, nobody was. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. in my defense, nobody was prepared for that. Yeah. Right. During the mortgage, during the mortgage crisis, I had just moved back from Japan, had just started Fundy software <laughs> and, uh, bought a house here in the U S and yeah, it was hard. Like I was working part-time for the DWF selling banners on their site. Uh -huh. um, I sold cars for Forgot a few months that. to pay the mortgage. Uh -huh. um, it was tough. Uh -huh. Like I had, I we had nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sucked. Yep. And um, I think, and I think, to a certain extent, it's it's easier to start from that point, but then to watch your business drop off, yeah, and start is I think a little bit harder. And I think a lot of people are at going to be at that point in the next six eight months and you know, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so one, you know, one of the things that as you're attracting clients, you, if your clients are going, I mean, it's simple math. If you're going to have fewer clients, you need to have clients that are going to spend more money. <laughs> it's simple, simple math. I think the right? economics. Right. So, um, one of the things that you can do is you're, you're doing your social media schedule that like you can use, your software to, for example, design wall art mockups and post those into your social media. And you're like, wouldn't this, you know, this looks great. You know, these photos of the Johnsons look great in the living room, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, posting photos of albums. Like when you, if you have a client that orders an album, that album comes in, shoot the crap out of it mm. before it goes out. Um, and, you know, if you can shoot it in your client's hands so that you're showing that tangible product, yeah. right? People buy what they, what they see. That's right. That's right. Definitely. All right. Yeah. So just one last plug for Andrew. He's available. His uh, mentor sessions are called Surviving a Crisis. And I think that, you know, if you're, you know, want to spend a little bit of money to have somebody to sit down and help you look through your books and really, you know, get to it with you. I think, uh, it would be, it would be totally worth it. And I think he's worth a lot more than, you know, what he's asking for in that. But, um, that being said, um, you know, Andrew, thank you for your time. You're very welcome. And Jen, thank you for being here. And I think we should, you know, I, I, I personally want to wrap up with, you know, just saying that, um, you know, we, we are definitely in a, in, a, in a very tough time right now. And, you know, from everything that's going on and just want everyone to know that we love you and, you know, we're going to make the change all the way around things that things are happening. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to see what's happening and, and it's going to be in our actions that are going to prove that. But yeah, anyway. 
Cool. Thank you, guys. Wish Thanks, you all the best. Yep. Um, I assume Jason's going to come out fairly soon and go skydiving with me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to come out and photograph that. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm afraid of heights. Did I tell you that? So am I. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I am just so excited to actually be with some, you know what? Like to give a friend a hug like that. I'm really looking forward to those oh, days that's, again. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, I don't, yeah. if I have to jump out of a plane to do that, then so be it. All right. So be it. Decided. Anyway. All right. You um, have that on recorded video, Andrew. Just I did. So you yep. know. It's happening. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know if we're still live. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, for those of you who are watching, thank you. Um, for those of you who are, who are coming in after this broadcast, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Andrew, thank you once again. Jen, thank you once again. Have a great weekend, everyone. Peace. Yep. See you guys later. Thank you, guys. Bye. Oh, he just peaced out.